All right, guys, what you're looking at here is a Bark River Knife and Tool Canadian Special. Uh, before I start the review, I want to take note that this knife does not come like this with this finish on the blade when you get, when you get them new. Uh, all Bark River Knife and Tool knives will come with a nice high polish on their blade. Um, I, what I did here is I forced a patina on this blade. If you want to see the original um, look of this knife, please uh, refer to my patina video. Uh, part 1, just search for Cutlery Lover Patina. That's P-A-T-I-N-A. -A. Uh, so you can see what this knife looked like uh, in the original state uh, when you first get it. Uh, I just want to make that note so people don't think it's going to come with this kind of gray finish on there. Uh, but anyway, this is a beautiful, beautiful fixed blade. Uh, it's a high-end semi-production knife. Uh, what do I mean by semi-production? Um, well, these knives are considered production knives. However, they have a lot of different aspects of a full-blown custom knife. A lot of hands-on work making these knives. Uh, very nice uh, you know, quality and finish and you know, they're, they're hand sharpened. They're, there's very little machine work done with these knives. I mean, there's a, a big staff um, working on these knives and putting a lot of uh, time and effort into them and making each and every one. Um, so they're considered, uh, in the knife community, a semi-production or semi-custom uh, knife. Um, definitely a lot more care taken in, you know, to the, each individual knife than, say, uh, you know, a, a standard production knife where they may make, you know, 20,000 of them. Uh, you could have a lot lower production model uh, production numbers on these. You know, there might only be a thousand of each model made, or you know, even lower in some cases. And like I said, just a lot of attention to detail, a lot of hands-on, actual people handling the knife and uh, you know, making the knife as opposed to more machinery uh, doing it. Um, but you know what? It is a high-end knife, and the price reflects that. Uh, this is not a cheap knife in my standards. Um, I would consider this an expensive fixed blade. Uh, this specific model here, uh, it's going to cost you anywhere from $160 to $200. Um, Bark River Knife and Tool, uh, they've been around here for about 20 years uh, in the United States of America. Uh, they're located in Michigan. Uh, they really just, they put out a superb product. Uh, I was introduced to these knives about four or five years ago uh, through Knife Forums. And uh, I actually won uh, an Upland Special model uh, in the same, same handle material here, which is a black canvas micarta. And it was a beautiful knife, and, you know, I traded it off um, foolishly because, uh, well, you know, maybe not foolishly. I traded it off for a, full, a couple different folding knives. Uh, I was more into folding knives than fixed blades, uh, so at the time, it made sense. Uh, however, I didn't really, uh, didn't really have the full understanding of uh, what I had, and it's kind of, uh, uh, kind of a regret to get rid of that knife. Um, but I'm glad to have another one in my hands here. Uh, like I said, this is the Upland Special. This is the full-size version. There are four versions of this pattern of knife. Okay, uh, the other three are smaller. They progress smaller and smaller. Uh, this is the full Canadian Special. Uh, the other ones in the Canadian series are the Canadian Mini, uh, the Canadian Micro, and the Can uh, Canadian Micro 2. And the, when you go down to the Canadian Micros, they are micro. They're, they're tiny. I mean, you have to read the specs on these things. Don't don't go out there and buy the micro and think you're going to get something like this. I mean, it's, a, it's small. I mean, I don't have the exact numbers, but it's a tiny knife. So you really got to look into those things. So you're not disappointed when you, you know, open your package to get it. And you're like, you know, this thing's tiny. Um, but anyway, let me give you a little, uh, some specs on this knife. Uh, as, to the best of my knowledge, every single Bark River knife and tool knife uses the same steel. And that's an A2 tool steel. Um, very high quality, a nice thick slab here, full tang, of course, with just two uh, handle scales here. Um, A2, A2 tool steel uh, is a carbon steel. It's going to need a little more maintenance than usual. That's why I did this force patina. Again, refer to my other video for the, more information on that. Uh, however, keeping it nice and shiny uh, is going to take some effort. Um, they definitely need a little bit more, more maintenance than your stainless steels. Uh, but wow, it's it's a great performing steel. If you guys are used to D2, uh, it's in the same family, obviously. Uh, very similar performance. Uh, really holds an edge nice. And uh, Bark River Knife and Tool, another thing they do consistently throughout their whole line of knives. And by the way, they have dozens and dozens of different models and designs. So if you like fixed blades, they're going to have something that fits your bill. Something that you really want uh, and would like and would be able to use. Um, but anyway, besides uh, basically all their knives using A2 steel... Uh, all of the knives also have a convex single bevel uh, blade. The convex grind 
is uh, also referred to as the apple seed grind. Uh, and it basically, well, you know what, let me, let me grab a piece of paper real quick. I have to kind of give you a visual on this. You just bear with me here one second. Grab a pen. Yeah, I had to grab paper here to kind of, it's kind of hard to explain. I have to kind of give you a visual uh, on this. Um, the convex grind comes down like this. Let's see if the pen will work here for me. If you're looking at the side of the blade, a convex grind is going to be something like this. Now, bear, bear in mind, this should be, you know, even on both sides. But basically, as it comes from the, this is the back of the spine here. If you were to look at the knife like this, okay, dead on, this is how the grind would look. Okay, also known as the apple seed grind because it looks kind of like an apple seed. Um, but it's going to come down and just gradually turn into your point. Okay, uh, it's also single bevel which means the very tip, there's only one grind all the way down. Uh, let me compare this to something else. Let's, let me compare this to uh, a flat ground double beveled blade. Let me draw that for you here real quick. Let's see, a flat grind here. Double bevel. It looks something, it looks something like this. Where you have, and again, you know, my drawings aren't perfect here, but you have a straight grind, okay, perfectly straight grind, okay, and then all of a sudden the angle changes, okay, let me show you, this angle is coming straight down and through, let me use some dotted lines here, but then all of a sudden you have a second angle change coming through here, okay, so you have your first grind straight down, and then you change the angle at the very edge, that's your second bevel. This doesn't have any angle change. This progressively just curves all the way to your tip, okay, or, or excuse me, your edge. So if that makes any sense there, hopefully that was more helpful than confusing, um, but that's the big difference. And when you have a convex grind, I mean, the performance on these blades are fantastic. Very smooth transition, uh, and with the, having a single beveled edge here, it's harder to sharpen. Uh, maybe, you know, in the future I'll have a series of sharpening videos on, on different grinds and, and stuff like that using, um, you know, freehand and... Uh, uh, stone sharpening, um, but it, it's definitely hard to sharpen. It's a different, a whole different thing. Um, but you know what? The performance is fantastic, and you can get for a much more acute angle. Okay, than when you when you have a, a secondary bevel here, uh, you have a steeper angle, and when you're cutting into things, you have as you can see here, it's almost you have more friction. Okay, and it's wider when you have the um, the single bevel. Okay, in combination with that convex grind. It just, it's a fantastic performing blade. Uh, really, really awesome. So again, hopefully this visual was a little bit more helpful than confusing to you. Um, but in the future, I'll, I'll uh, you know, explain further into that with uh, sharpening and stuff like that. Um, but really great performing blade, as you saw, or if you didn't see, check out, I have another video uh, showing some food preparation with this specific knife. Um, my patina video and my food prep probably should have came after my review here, <laughs> but I kind of did it out of order. Um, but it just, it's a fantastic performing knife. Uh, and if you have uh, something like a leather strop, uh, very easy to maintain that edge. So you don't have to worry about uh, full sharpening, you know, for a while anyway. Um, so again, the blade is uh, a very well performing blade. Nice design. It's a great little uh, companion for a camp knife, something like that. Uh, as you saw there, food prep. You can do a whole bunch of different tasks with this knife. Uh, the blade is actually four inches. Let me give you some specs on this knife since I'm already pretty deep into the review. Um, the full length on this knife is eight and three quarter inches long, and you do have a full a full four inch blade. Okay, uh, all Bark River knife and tool blades are going to be plain edge. You're not going to see any serrations in their entire line, um, so don't be looking for those. You can probably get those done aftermarket if you feel that's something you need, um, but I probably wouldn't. I mean, a good a good plain edge blade will get the job done if it's nice and sharp. Um, now, as I said, uh, there's a lot of different variety in their models. Um, this one happens to feature, as I mentioned earlier, a black canvas micarta a handle scales. Okay, uh, that's going to be uh, kind of common as well as your like stag type handles. However, Bark River Knife and Tool has uh, 28 different handle materials they use for their knives. 
So if you custom order these, you can get them in, in any variation you want. They have things from Corlon, which is a, a synthetic. Um, you get a pretty cool like swirl look in a lot of those. Uh, they have everything from that uh, all the way to exotic woods. Um, you know, down to uh, uh, hard synthetics like this, like the canvas micarta, uh, and everything in between. You know, beautiful natural stag, uh, bone, all kinds of stuff. So if you if you want specific looks, they're going to be a little harder to find, but you can definitely find them out there. Um, as you see here, this has a um, they have rivets connecting the handles together, the handle scales. Uh, there's three different options you can go with the rivets. You, I have, this one happens to have solid stainless steel rivets. As you see here, there's four of them two large ones and then two smaller ones uh, towards the, the tip here. Uh, or you can get hollowed rivets, which uh, the lanyard hull is uh, a hollow rivet. So if you can imagine this, besides having uh, solid ones here, these two, you can also have them hollowed, just like your lanyard uh, hull. And it is a large lanyard hull. It accommodates you know, your 550 very easily. No struggles there. You see right through there. Um, very, very nice. Uh, and with a with a fixed blade, even a smaller fixed blade, I would probably throw on a lanyard, you know, if I were to use this one, which I will. Uh, in the future, I will definitely throw a lanyard on there. But besides uh, having a solid pins, uh, you can have hollow pins, or you can have mosaic pins. Now, I don't have any mosaic pins uh, currently to show you, uh, but if you look them up, just Google them, you know, or go on the forums and, and do a search for them. They are really, really beautiful. Uh, very artistic looking. It's basically uh, a different combination of small... Um, very, very small tubing of different materials like brass and copper and different steels and it just uh, forms a pattern and they weld them together and then they cut them into sections and then of course on the end you can see the nice pattern. Uh, they're just really beautiful. It's real, real big attention to detail when you go into the mosaic pins. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, this knife is, uh, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this already, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but it's not a cheap knife, uh, it's up there in price, 160 to 200 uh, brand new. Um, again, not for everyone, but if you are in the market for a high quality uh, fixed blade, you know, Bark River Knife and Tool does it right. They know their fixed blades, and they, I mean, I don't know anyone, I don't know anyone at all who got a Bark River Knife and Tool and was disappointed in any way whatsoever. Uh, they have a huge following. In fact, if you want more information on this or want to talk strictly about these knives, uh, knifeforums.com, they have a whole section just for Bark River Knife and Tool uh, chatter. So you can see different models there, get people's opinions. Uh, they're just fantastic knives. These knives will come with a leather sheath, uh, very, very high quality uh, sharpshooter sheath. These are uh, produced by sharpshooter uh, sheaths. You can Google them as well. They do have aftermarket sheaths, uh, sheaths excuse me. Um, they're 30 bucks if you want to get different versions for your Bark River Knife and Tool. Um, this one that, that's good, you're going to get with your knife uh, is a nice deep sheath, which I really like. It holds a lot of that handle. I mean, the blade is up here. Uh, it really makes for a secure fit. It's not falling out. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, it is only a vertical carry belt sheath. Um, very supple, soft leather. Really, really beautiful. This one happens to have the, uh, the separate loop here. You can put a fire steel in here if you want, or you can put, uh, you know, um, uh, any combination of ceramic hones, you know, or rods. Uh, you can put a sharpening steel in there if you want to. You can buy a small sharpening steel uh, on the secondary market. Uh, but just beautiful sheath from sharpshooters. Um, also, another option, too, is uh, this does not come with the knife. However, uh, I got one when I did the trade for this knife. You can get a Kydex form. You know, if you want to go more of a tactical route or have different mounting options, perfect fit. Uh, really nice. Uh, again, this is something aftermarket. This has nothing to do with, the, you know, when you get the knife, you're not going to be able to, to get it with the Kydex. You don't really have a choice. Um, you do get the leather one. But I do want to mention that, um, just like any other fixed blade, if you don't like the supplied sheath that comes with it, uh, whether it be mounting options or, again, maybe you want more of a tactical carry, uh, you can always go with the aftermarket and get something like this. I mean, these aren't very expensive. You can have uh, a whole slew of different makers make these Kydex sheets and, and custom molded sheets for under 50 bucks. On average, they're about 30 to $40, uh, sometimes cheaper. But you do have options out there. Uh, beautiful knife. Uh, I do want to mention, too, is that the handle on this specific uh, style, this is the Canadian, uh, you have the finger grooves. You have four finger grooves. And you might, you might think that having figure grooves kind of limits how you can hold a knife, uh, but it's really, really comfortable. They're not very sharp. You know, they're scalloped, they're tapered. 
okay, and they're very smooth to the touch. So you naturally grab the knife so your, your fingers land in the grooves, but if you uh, happen to carry, you know, if you grip it, if you grip it so that your fingers are actually on the, the, where the tip of the grooves are, where you might think, well, that's terribly uncomfortable, it's really not. No matter how you grab this knife, it's going to be comfortable in your hands, uh, any position. Uh, like I said, it's very smooth. You don't have to worry about those. If that's something you're, you're looking at and thinking, well, you know what, that might not be comfortable for my hands because maybe, perhaps you have very large hands or very small hands and you're worried about the, the scalloping here, uh, you don't have to be. It's comfortable, like I said, any position, whether you're holding the tip of that or if your finger happens to fall naturally in that groove. Uh, fantastic. Beautiful knife. Um, so that should, uh, that should conclude my review. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, these knives are very special, very nice. Like I said, there's a very strong following with, the, with these knives, and for good reason. Uh, very high quality. And let me tell you, all the guys that have these knives, they're using them. There's plenty of people out there who just collect them, but for the most part, they're using these things, and they're really beating on them, and they love them. Uh, so that's the Bark River Knife and Tool Canadian Special. Again, hope you guys enjoyed the review. I thank you for tuning in and watching it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.